Hey everyone, today I am working on a Lexus IS250. This should cover the model years 2006 to 2012. It should also cover the IS350. I'm going to transform this into this. If you have the OEM navigation, you will most likely have your screen die at some point, especially the O6s and the O7s. They are prone to this. If you go to buy a replacement screen, it's over a thousand dollars, usually at minimum. It's insane for something that is pretty much outdated and obsolete, other than the air conditioning controls. You should definitely opt for something upgraded. You can go with this full Tesla style, you can go with other ones. This one has the air conditioning and heating built right into it. It is specifically made for this and I highly recommend it. Don't forget to subscribe and let's get to it. Here's a video of the unit, the buttons power on. Basically I just use auto to make the climate go to low because you can just adjust the temperature there and you don't really need a touch screen ever. That's all I really use. The audio still works. The disc auxiliary, you change that. When it's not working is the touch display. This is our model number, so you can see it's the same one. And the original one, the driver board died. I'm going to splice these two together and sell them as one working unit. But it's going to be replaced. And then I'm going to upgrade some of that interior stuff here. This uh, ugly knob, this ugly fake wood paneling. The foam you can see around the edges is quite bad. It doesn't look as bad in person as it does on the camera here. To remove this, First you start with these two side panels. You can pry up here with your fingernail and you just slide it back. So here, easy with two hands. Sometimes you can squeeze the side here and just slide it back. There we go. Grab the fingernail, kind of lift, just don't pull too hard because you have to slide it back. So make sure you slide it back, not up. So they have little white clips. Then that gives you access to the screw right there. I believe they're 10 mils on each side. Then on the top vent here, this is a little more complicated. You look up there and you'll see little clips and you just have to bring them one direction. So there's one there, one back there, one there, and you guessed it, one right there. You have to pull them downwards with a screwdriver. You'll push them up to get them back. kind of snap like that. Once all four of the clips are popped down, this will just slide out. If they're not popped down, this will not slide out. You'll feel it. There's just one clip there. The wires ran underneath and then one clip there. You just squeeze them and pull out like that. And then you'll undo the back right there, you'll undo the back there, and then squeeze and pull out the other side. Keep in mind that this dash unit, as soon as you touch these edges, they just crumble. And there are ways to fix it, but it won't look perfect. This, this has the sticky dash problem that most of them have, so be careful. Anyhow, the other two bolts are there. So it's four bolts total. I'm using an extension, 3 8 and a 10 millimeter. And when you loosen it up in there, I'm personally using a magnetic tool in order to take the bolt out. But you can use you can use needle nose if you if you need, or it may come out with the driver. If you drop it back there, you'll have to you'll have to pop out the side panel and try to dig it out. Oftentimes, if you drop back there, you can just put your finger here and pull this outwards a little bit and it will fall out if it's gone down the side. The first thing you could do is wait till you pull the panel off, wait till you pull this off, and then take the ashtray sort of, what is this in this car? Ashtray. Take it out and then go underneath and grab it. Should be no issue. After it is loose, after you got the top two bolts out, you just pull it out. That's really it. Go ahead and take it for another break. Okay. 
can start unclipping. Right here is the tire pressure sensor. You can unclip that. The radio has some connected here. Actually, some of these are going to be difficult to get out because I've done it so many times now. So this one right here. Alright, and this little antenna one. This little side one. And then the, this right here. This right here, you just slide in the side right here. Lift the clip a little bit and then off. This just unplugs. Just a side note, the bolts are easier to access if you just take out the ashtray and the ashtray is just held in by two screws right here and right here when it's put in and I rewrapped this anyways plus it kind of allows you room to run the two GPS or two USB cables. I kind of just tucked them right here and they're just hanging right there for now. So I'd have to find something better. I wanted to lay this out because this is the confusing part. You're basically going to have two main power harnesses. They'll say a certain configuration on the cord. This one says high, this one says medium. Most likely ones without the navigation will be medium or low. And the high configuration is going to be anyone with the navigation because the company Phoenix told me I had a mid, but they were clearly wrong. This is the only plug right here on the mid that fits into anything. And this goes into nothing. Plus this looks like every separate circuit for the speakers themselves. And this would just, on top of that, none of these plug in anything. So all of these plug into all the units. This right here plugs into the CAN bus decoder, and this one plugs into the first port on the back, which is audio out or something. If you do have the mid-level, this is the CAN bus on one side decoder, and this is also the CAN bus on the other side, if you're wondering what both of these are for. So you only use the big one on the high level, which I'm using. This says double flash line, which is for the hazards, but it doesn't wire into anything on my unit, so I, I believe this is, again, for the mid-level unit, so I'm not using that. This is the OBD2 port, which I don't think actually sends data, so I'm just going to get a Bluetooth adapter. What this does is just sends RPMs to the head unit, which I don't really need. This is the line out, so this has all a bunch of stuff that you can send to separate head units or amps, maybe. This is the one that they're getting back to me on. I don't know, original car CD tie line. This brown one or this yellow one plugs into the back of the unit in the first port next to the large power port and this actually ties in between the factory harness and this plug right here with the three greens and it looks like it turns all the speaker wires into just these three I don't know I don't think I need it I can't find the difference in function with or without it but I'm probably just gonna leave it in this is where you can connect your unit for your Android Auto or whatever. One's an OTG right here, USB. That's the one you want to use for your phone to mirror it. And then this is just a typical audio video and this also plugs into the back of the unit. But this brown wire here that says back, that's the one you're going to splice into your reverse camera for your stock. So I have to find that on the diagram really fast. But other than that, you can use this camera one right here, this RCA to just wire in an extra one if you don't or, uh, you know, like a cheap $20 one off Amazon. That's an external microphone, plugs into the back. That's the GPS antenna, screws into the back knob, and there's a Wi-Fi antenna already screwed in the back. These two stay off. All these capped wires stay capped. Pretty much the only thing that connects here is the two green ones here. This connects to the OBD2 thing. I don't know if I'm gonna actually use that, but maybe I'll just run it if it's not too much of a problem. And that's really it. These key ones right here and this auto antenna, this is for stuff that if you don't have the CAN bus decoder. So I'm not even gonna bother with that. And that's where I'm at right now. Here's the high level harness. The black plug goes to the to the head unit. So basically you're just gonna sit here and mash these up. There, there are only two plugs that are similar. 
this is the bottom set of plugs that went to the radio part and this is the top set that went to the navigation screen these two right here are the similar ones you're going to actually use this one up here because this is the hazard and the uh, passenger airbag so you're not going to use this one according to them to start i'm going to put this one in it's literally just one gray wire which is stupid but i'm going to use this original car cd tie line in between just because it might be necessary later and I don't want to take this out so many times if I don't have to. Also the pins tend to bend very easily so be careful you, you just slide these in right. This now plugs to the main harness, the, the one with all the green wires here. That one's also another one that bends easily. The top ones, you just have this last one here with the all these four little wires, it plugs into this. So now the three top that they went to the screen are taken and done. Now for the bottom, where they went to the radio, there's just two large ones. So you take the largest one, plug it in, the medium one, plug it in. Small one, nothing that I could find. You're also not going to be using this small antenna, and you're also not going to be using this gray optical plug. There is an adapter I am missing for the passenger airbag light. Here's the CAN bus decoder. Remember the large size side is for the, that's it. This is only if you have the mid-level to you plug in both. This is pretty much done. So you just plug these three in right here. The yellow, the white, and the black to the head unit. You're gonna plug in more, but to get basic power, actually you don't even need to plug any of them except the black. Now the, the Wi-Fi antenna just screws into here like that. That's it. HDMI out. This is the large antenna line. So this one can go here like this. Here, we'll plug that in after. And here's the main unit one. So that's how you just basically get power to this thing. This one right here, they, they have very, there's a little angle on the top corners of them, but they're pretty precise. The flash line one goes here in place of this. That's why I also think it's for the mid-level only. The yellow one goes there, and then I will plug in all the rest, like the USB and whatnot, after. I guess I can't have to plug this in in case I forget, because I'm actually going to install it now. Not that I use the radio, but this is my car, so... The reverse harness is the the audio video in cable and that plugs in to the top here. You see the ports listed out on here. The brown wire here is the one I'm going to just connect to a power source and see if it triggers the backup camera. To get the unit to fit, I went ahead, well actually before I get to that, let me see. These are the two USB cords and I was going to run them into here and I guess you could if you just really extended them but they're going to be so tight that it's not going to work. Tuck them and run them out probably right here on the passenger side or driver's side. The non-OTG one, I ran to the glove box to power anything else I might want to use. I never really used that. And the OTG one is the one with the cell phone link for Android. You might want to run that somewhere more accessible. I was going to run it here on top, but then you just have cables in front. Don't really want that either. Somewhere where your phone's going to sit and charge. It's feasible to maybe put it on the driver's side underneath and just run it through later with a USB extension. That might be what I'll do because when I ran the cables before, I ran I ran them with extensions through here. So again, run it back through that hole right there with an extension. For now, so I don't want to take it back out. I'm just going to tuck it under. The microphone, which is plugged into this right here. Single single ring around it, which means it's mono. I'm going to run it back through the inside port there, and it will come back out here. And it'll be not pinched because there's a gap built in naturally right there. If you would like a good place to run this, you remove that screw right there and that screw right there. And you pop this panel down. And you can see this wire right here is just ran up through there and there's no slack in it. So I'm just gonna pull it out. That's where it was ran. You wanna make sure it's not squishing. And then you can run this up through here. And then it comes out right there and just wraps around nicely and sits in this chair. And this would be a, a good location. 
I popped this out with a flathead. I just stuck the flathead in the bottom and this clip just pushed in enough to slide it out. But you can do it from the back too with the finger. Right there you can see my finger. I'm going to run the wire through here for the sake of not squashing it. Because it might have bent too much right here. And if you really want to make it pretty, just drill a hole in this and run the wire through it. I drilled a 5 16 hole through. That's the minimum that allowed the head of the plug to get through. I, I strung this through already, so it's on the line. Now, I carry this little piece of coat hanger around in my toolbox, and it may seem weird, but it comes in handy quite often. I pushed the head down a little bit on the tip, used a piece of electrical tape, and I shined a light through the back here. Which this, the camera has a light on it, but it allows you to see yeah, my camera's not adjusting. But it allows you to see down where you want to put the unit. And then you just pull it through the bottom with your hand. Now, if you run it correctly through the wires, there's no tension at all. If you get it wrapped around this unit and all that, it's got a lot of tension. So there's the wire. Just pulled it through the bottom right there. And this is on top here. And this is just going to sit right in the slot right there. Done. Keep in mind, no matter where I place this in the car, there's echo. The person hears themselves. It's not going to be fixed, but it's as good as it gets. So where the cable is ran, you can see my fingers. You can hand it to yourself. It's got enough room. Then you're just going to pull this through. You're going to pull the other end through until this has sufficient tension. for the unit to get it to fit you take the plates off and you put one screw there because there's only pretty much one hole here make sure you have the right side it says R and then here you take this screw off this screw right here came on the unit you just loosen it move the plate here and then put it back in and then I'm also going to put one more screw I think right there or right there there's mounting holes here so I'm just going to put one of my own screws in here, I think. And I just reused two of the screws that were in the original mounting plate. So that's all I did, and it seems to fit pretty nicely. The, these two points right here, right here and right here, line up really nicely inside there. And for the GPS cable, I stuck it right there for now because there's really no need to mount it anywhere as of yet. And I'm probably going to take this apart one more time when I wear in the backup camera. So I have both mounting plates on, and I have three plugs four plugs sorry I have the the audio out plug I don't need because it has a port already wired into the main unit right here the yellow plug it provides these but if you want more options you could probably pull that out and use that Brown's USB black is the reverse camera plus the inputs yellow would be the outputs and white is I'm not sure <laughs> Something to do with the main power harness that replaces that line signal, so I'm guessing it has to do with... Actually, it's a J, which is a air key jack, so maybe that has to do with the steering wheel controls, I'm not sure. And then I have the two antennas plugged in and the radio antenna as well. And that's it, so I'm just going to tuck it away for now. This is the signal wire for the backup camera, which you can tap to gray plug. I haven't looked at it yet, but there's a gray plug up underneath there, and it's a yellow wire, and it's pin number 23, and the yellow wire will give you, it's the reverse light. So you take out this panel right here just by prying it off with your hand. This panel, just pull it off. All I did is put a flat head right here, pull that out a little bit, and remove the bottom panel. And then I just pulled this off with these clips here. And in the back you'll see a bunch of connectors. It's the very top left one, like a super long gray one. It is the pin between, it is the yellow wire. It looks to be open pins on the top. And the very top, maybe there's an orange and black wire on the top left, and then there's open pins. And then below that is a brown wire, it's the first one, and then it's the yellow wire. The both are thin, and then it's the thick red wire. It's the yellow wire between the thick red wire below it and the brown wire above it.
that's the wire that's half for 12 volt synchro converse. This plug, which is one of the top two plugs in the original, there are three plugs on the bottom that go to the radio part, and there's two on the top that plug into the navigation. This is the top one, the J51. It doesn't have these large openings on top here. They're all the same size. I'll clean this up and try to put, I'll put a better picture with the video. Problem is that this wire right here, pin 13, is supposed to send a six volt signal to the backup wire from the harness. This is not getting six volts no matter what. So what I'm doing is I have to jump this and this with the wire from the reverse lights. So I'm doing that and that will put the signal through. Brown wire from the backup source on the back of the PX6 head unit it says back. I also had was yellow wire. This yellow wire is running to the 11 or 12 volt source that I pinned earlier from the left side of the kick panel under the driver's side, which is the reverse light signal. This wire is connecting it to the pin 13 right there. It's black. And pin 13 is the supposed to give the 6 volt signal when you're backing up, which you normally connect to this, but for some reason it doesn't trip, so you have to connect it to that and this. And if you think you can just bypass that, you cannot because you it needs to send it to the CAN bus as well for some reason. So if you just connect a 12 volt source to this, it will trigger on here, but there'll be no camera signal. For the camera signal itself, it is pin 27 and 14 which is 27 is the red pin right there and 14 is the white one on the very end so it's the second if you look at this this is the bottom so the bottom left second from the bottom left and the first from on the top left is the ground and the red one is the positive positive. and all that's going to is the RCA plug so the RCA plug the center part of it is the positive which would be the V plus that's going to the pin 27 which is red which is the positive source and the white one which is ground which is pin 14 is just going to the residual copper wire that's surrounding the inner RCA wire so that's it and then it looks messy but that's because I spliced a bunch of wires to test it and I'm casually putting them back together so that's it I still don't think you need the CD tie line, but I'm just going to leave it. And I believe two of these wires go to the CAN bus, and two I don't know where. And there is the image. Backup camera is working. The rear channels are unmuted, as if they don't work, but actually the rear right channels, all, all six speakers will work when you turn this one front right one on. So all the speakers are working on the right side, including part of the subwoofer. And now all the speakers in the car, which are like 10 or 12, including the subwoofer, are working. But now none of them work because they're connected to these two only. So this does nothing. I will give two pieces of advice for reinstalling the head unit. One, reach your arm down, grab all the wiring, and pull it upwards so it can sit above the actual deck that sits below. Because you'll have a lot of trouble trying to get the clips to line up back there and make sure you pull I did it already but it still came down a little bit make sure you pull the central fan wiring back above before you secure this in or else you'll have to undo it and figure that out that's it and then on the unit just make sure you push the fan clips up if you're wondering how I get these bottom screws back in without a magnet or anything I just balance it ever so carefully you can probably magnetize the drill bit, but or the drill bit, the uh, socket extension. So it's in there. I just hand tighten them until they, I hand tighten them until they all get there, and then I tighten them just a little more. It's much easier to put these in and lock them. But I just thought I'd give an example. You just take it and you push it up, and it snaps like that. That's it. Do that to all four. When you're putting the 
little things back in, you just kind of set them and it will, you have to play around with it until it kind of sits in this locked position. You'll line up the two white tabs with the two grooves right there and right there. But it kind of just sits before it snaps in and it takes a little bit to get it seated in the right spot. So just kind of seat it above and then I'm just going to push it. That's it and it snaps in. You're good to go. The knob is a huge improvement. You just screw it on, screw it off. That's not really relevant to this, but if you're going to do some interior stuff, you might as well. Also, had this laying around. This is a 20 or $30 knob from eBay, the generic ones. There are two models. One has a Bluetooth connection, which you might like, and the other one has a wired connection. So this one is wired, and I already wired it into the back, into the retro steering wheel controls. The reason I wanted this is because you can actually change it. And if you look here, the volume's adjusting. I much prefer this volume knob so that's why this is here and this again isn't my car but this is an issue for the driver of this car as well these can change the tracks and this can actually activate the phone not that it's used much but it's kind of cool and then you can just remove it and there's, there are batteries inside here and they seem to last forever so it's pretty decent if you want to get really proper you can just remove it and you can see that it actually fits pretty decently there so you can adapt the cup part a little bit more and put that there but anyhow there's that it's kind of cool the unit functions decently. If requested, I can do a review of the functions of the unit. It's been updated. The Android Auto Cool Walk has recently come out in February for this car or the user's device. It's a Flip 4 Samsung. And it's awesome on here because everything's split three or four ways. I can't show it right now, but again, I could probably do a review and then touch on that a little bit. It's awesome on this screen. So Cool Walk has definitely improved the screen a whole lot. And the HVAC controls. So, is that called that in the car? I don't know. The heating and the air conditioning controls for the car. They work pretty well. They're also constantly docked in the bottom. I'm sorry about the glare, but that is the whole point of doing this. And everything else is just a bonus. So it worked out pretty well. It's a substantial improvement from what it was. And it's pretty nice that it all worked out. The vent, the central vent, is from an 09, sorry, it's from the 06 through 08 version. This unit needs the 09 vents, which are almost identical, except they kind of curve down and fit this better. They are 1 to 50 at minimum, which is insane. You can go to a junkyard possibly and source it. I haven't done it yet. Maybe when I get time. It's not that serious, but if you want your car to look like absolute perfection, you do that. Also, you can do some touch-up stuff on this with... I forget what it is. I'll see if I can find it and put it in the description. But it's sort of filler, and then you paint it if it doesn't match exactly. But it has been known to work. What you want to do is ideally not touch this if you can. Most of this damage was already done to this car before I even got to it, so... It's not from me. That's it, that's the final outcome. It's pretty awesome, it works well. Long term, it's also functioned quite well. If this video helped you out, hit that subscribe button. Subscribe for more to come as well. If you have questions, put them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. Definitely go this route if you wanna take a chance and upgrade your car instead of just trying to source the most expensive OEM units. <laughs> All right, take care, thanks for watching.